Another rule we have is called the multiplication rule. So what it says is that if an experiment is run twice with replacement, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. As an example, let's suppose I pick two cards, but in a special way. I'm going to take a regular old 52 card deck that has four aces, by the way, and I'm going to pick a card, look at it, put it back in the deck, mix it a bit, and then pick another card and look at it. So I want to look at the probability of picking a card, seeing an ace, putting it back in the deck, picking another card, and seeing another ace. To find that probability, it helps to use this multiplication rule, because notice that this particular experiment is done with replacement, because we are putting it back in the deck after we've looked at the card. So we can say the probability of A1, I'm calling that A1, meaning the first card is an ace, and A2, meaning the second card is also an ace, is equal to 1 in 13, and that's um, reduced from 4 aces out of 52 cards. Or you could say there are 13 values, and one of those is an ace. So 1 out of 13 for the probability of the first card being an ace. And then since we have replacement, the probability of the second card being an ace is also 1 out of 13. And what that is, is 1 over 169 when I do the multiplication. Notice this is very different than without replacement. So without replacement, this is not true. We actually get a different answer, and we'll talk about that next. So let me continue on. I want to talk about conditional probability. So to define that, I say the probability of an event A occurring given the knowledge that B has already occurred, is denoted by the conditional probability statement. Probability of A, and we read this little vertical line segment with the word given. This says probability of A given B. So an example, let's suppose I pick two cards, and now I am not going to replace the cards. I'm going to pick a card, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to take that card that I just looked at it, I'm going to put it aside, I'm not going to put it back in the deck. And then I'm going to pick a second card and I'm going to look at it. So the question is, what is the probability that the second card is a king, given that the first card is a king? So to find that probability out, it's no longer just 1 out of 13 or 4 out of 52, because we have information that the first card was a king. And because we know the first card was a king, we looked at that first card, and we saw a king. There are only three kings left in the deck. There are also only 51 cards to choose from, because we took that first king and we put it aside. That means there's only 51 cards left. So we could say the probability that the second card is a king, given the first card is a king, is equal to 3 divided by 51. If you want to reduce that as 1 17th, you can, or decimal, I don't really care so much. So we have another multiplication rule that involves conditional probability. And that is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Notice that this is different than the multiplication rule when we have events at which we had with replacement. Without replacement, you're forced to write it as probability of A times the probability of B given A. But if A and B are independent, and in the case of replacement, A and B are independent, but there's other cases also, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So an example of two events being independent, let's suppose I flip a coin, 
and then I roll a die. And let's suppose A is the event that the coin is ahead, and B is the event that the die rolls on a 6. Then those are independent events, because the probability of A and B, that is equal to 0.5 times 1 6, which is the probability of, of a head times the probability of rolling a 6. So notice that this equation does work, so the events A and B are independent. 